Hey everyone, what's up? It's Kahoob here. Welcome to the first episode of my Bitcoin for Beginners series. If you are brand new to Bitcoin, this series will be perfect for you. So I'll provide all the necessary links down in the description for this tutorial. So the very first step to owning Bitcoin is actually running a Bitcoin node. If you're not running a node, then that means someone else is running one for you. And if that is the case, then that means you are reducing your privacy and also nodes are able to change settings meaning you may disagree with the node settings on um, what is what it's supporting or not supporting within the Bitcoin blockchain. But either way, you most likely will never know what, what their node settings are. I will have a video down in the description that goes over why you should run your own node. Personally, I am running my own node due to privacy, and I also want to be in control of what I support or don't support by changing my node settings as it is more transparent that way. And the main reason I decided to run a node is to help the Bitcoin network become more decentralized. A Bitcoin node is the actual network, and if not a single person was running a node, then you would not be able to do transactions with Bitcoin as you must broadcast transactions. So one thing to keep in mind is that to run a Bitcoin node, you will need 500 gigabytes of data available plus 5 to 10 gigabytes per month if you want to, but um, that's if you want to run a non-prune node. Now, if you don't have the necessary space on your computer to run a non-prune node, then I recommend running a pruned node. If you do want to run a non-prune node, then I would recommend adding a one terabyte SSD to your computer. Although this may not be necessary for you if you already have the space required. A non-prune node downloads a full copy of the Bitcoin blockchain and keeps it stored on your computer. While a prune node will download the blockchain and as it downloads blocks, it will start to discard blocks it has already verified. I will show you how to go into the settings to enable pruning to whatever block storage of gigabyte amount you want. Uh, so first thing you will want to do is go into my description and click on the bitcoincore.org link. You will want to download the latest version or whichever version you want and choose which operating system you use. Some people will choose a specific version to download because they disagree with changes on certain updates and therefore they want to run the Bitcoin node they agree with most. You do not need to download the latest version for it to work correctly and um, any version should be fine. Okay, so you will then click download and you will want to download the latest version or whichever version you want and choose which operating system you use. For me, it will be Windows and I'll be downloading the latest version. I'm not gonna do it right now, but as you can see, I can click this big blue button that says download Bitcoin Core for the latest version of 25.0 or I can choose the operating system of Windows EXE. Um, and obviously there are other ways to download other versions. You can go into that on this website. So once it's downloaded, you will need to let it <clears throat> sync to the blockchain. Sorry about that. This can take hours to days to weeks to months. It will depend on your setup on what you are installing the node on. For me, it took only a few days, but I have a pretty good gaming PC and good internet. And uh, what this sync is doing is basically verifying every single block from the beginning of when Bitcoin was released back in 2009. So it is verifying every block from 2009 to now, as in it's copying the whole blockchain history up until its current time. This also means if you ever stop running your node, when you relaunch it, it will need to sync back up. But luckily, it won't have to sync again back from 2009. It will only need to sync and catch back up from the time you quit the node to when you launched it back open. Let me show you a little uh, picture of what it should look like as you are downloading and syncing to the blockchain. And also let me show you how to prune your node really quick too. So you would go into settings next to file on the Bitcoin Core client and then click options. And then on main in the options, you'd click on prune block storage. I'm personally pruning my node to 20 gigabytes, but you can do uh, as little or as much as you want. And uh, you can join my Telegram or Discord group uh, of Bitcoiners that will answer your questions about pruning and all that. Um, if you want to know more about uh, how much gigabytes should you prune down to or whatnot, it's usually personal preference, but it is good to know what exactly it changes and what it could be worse or better for. But um, as you can see, if you hover over it, it does say enabling pruning significantly reduces the disk space required to store transactions. All blocks are still fully validated. Reverting the setting requires re-downloading the entire blockchain, so keep that in mind. But yeah, back into the video as this part was edited in. So this is what it should look like. So a pretty important step about running a node, in my opinion, is port forwarding. 
Port forwarding is basically allowing other people to connect to your IP. Basically, it is a way for other nodes to connect to your node. The reason port forwarding is important is because that is what helps make Bitcoin more decentralized. While if you don't port forward, you get to reap the benefits of running a node as your node connects out to other nodes to verify blocks, but you won't be letting other nodes connect to yours to verify blocks. So basically do the same thing you're doing. So if you don't port forward, you'll reap the benefits and you won't be giving out those same benefits to others. So basically by not port forwarding, it is considered a selfish way of running a node while port forwarding while running your node is not selfish as you let others reap the same benefit you are getting by letting them connect to your node as well. Now, if for some, for some reason, some security reason or some, you know, if you do your research about port forwarding and how it can affect your security and cybersecurity, all that. Um, for me, it, I, I mean, for a lot me and a lot of people, it doesn't really matter. It's not really going to do much if you port forward, like it's, you're going to be fine. But um, if there is any reason you can't port forward, I would still recommend running a node. I'm not going to say don't run a node if you're not going to port forward. I still recommend running a node, but I'm just going to highly, highly recommend you do port forward. Now, I know some people may not be able to, and that's fine. Okay, so if you do not know how to port forward, you can look this up for, on YouTube for YouTube tutorials on this. Or for me personally, I was able to look up article tutorials provided by my internet service provider, also known as you know your ISP, as port forwarding is not unique to Bitcoin. And I have also personally done it to create a Minecraft server before too. So I don't think it's like a very Bitcoin specific thing. Um, your ISP should know how to do it and there should be tutorials and all that. So just someone who's good with internet should know how to port forward. So I hope this tutorial helped you all. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content like this, especially as part two will be the next big step to owning some Bitcoin. That will be where I teach you all how to download a Bitcoin only desktop wallet and we will use it as a watch only wallet. And if you're wondering what that is, a watch only wallet, it's a wallet that does not have the private keys on it, which we will go over the topic of what private keys are on and how to store them properly as well. But for now, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I will reply to you as soon as I can. You can also come to my Telegram group for an even faster response from me. And lastly, I'd like to advertise, not getting paid for this, but I'd like to advertise a really good, great Discord group that is filled with Bitcoiners and only Bitcoiners. Uh, and there are many people there that are even more technical than I am. And if I'm not able to help, then one of them in that group would be glad to do so. I will be putting that Discord down in the description, which I am also an active member in. And I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in part two. Mm -hmm.